forests are home to an astonishing 80% of life on land and abound with an amazing variety of creatures, big and small. You know some of them, others might surprise you. Even the tiniest of creatures play a crucial role, working hard to sustain life, enabling trees and all the other remarkable plants to grow. Sometimes even unnoticed, they are the heroes in the circle of life that keeps our planet healthy. But today, this biodiversity is under serious threat. Millions of hectares of forest are being lost every year. We need to care for our only home by caring for our forests. care for our only home our planet is by caring for our forest. This is a powerful message. Forests sustain life. They are home to 80% of life on land. Every 21st of March, we celebrate the importance of forest. This year, International Day of Forest highlights biodiversity. I would like to share two key messages with you. First, let us remember that we all depend on the forests and their biodiversity. They provide shadow, energy, medicine, income, and food. Forests give us 86 million green jobs. They support the livelihoods of millions more. Around 1 billion people directly depend on the forestry for food. They give us edible plants, mushrooms, insects, fish, and wild meat. Forests also supply water. They are homes for many pollinators. These are essential for sustainable food production. Our lives are interconnected with the forest. My second message for the day, we need innovative and practical solutions. To ensure that the forestry and the biodiversity are sustainably managed. Biodiversity is under serious threat from climate change, deforestation, and forest degradation. Agricultural expansion continues to be a major driver of forest loss. But the food production can and must coexist with the biodiversity conservation. We need a biodiversity smart food systems. We need to target food insecurity, agricultural production, and the forest conservation together. We also need strategic partnerships to help replicate and scale up successful solutions. Together, we need to promote the right policies, ensure capacity building, and share the best practices. As we celebrate the forests today, as we welcome the United Nations Decade on Ecosystem Restoration, I encourage you all to take action. Time is short. Let us act now. Happy International Day of Forests to all of you. some 80% of the world's terrestrial biodiversity. More than a billion people depend directly on forests for their food, shelter, income, and energy. Forests are one of the key pillars for maintaining biodiversity globally, nationally, and locally. This is an urgent time for our planet. We are in the middle of a climate crisis and a global biodiversity emergence. Yet, we are also living in a period of unprecedented momentum for the environment. 
Young people everywhere are holding us to account, and governments are listening. Through various recent commitments and agreements, including the New York Declaration on Forests, the Paris Agreement, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its Sustainable Development Goals, and the UN Strategic Plan for Forests 2017 to 2030, as well as its Global Forest Goals, governments are beginning to integrate consideration of forest ecosystem services into their development policies and plans. And later this year, parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity will adopt a post-2020 global biodiversity framework. In this super year for biodiversity, and many years to come, managing forests sustainably and restoring them when needed will be critical for people, biodiversity, and the climate. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and happy International Day of Forests. My name is Meta Wilkie, and I lead the Forestry Policy and Resources Division at FAO. I'd like to talk to you about the linkages between forests, biodiversity, and people, and what FAO is doing to help conserve and use this biodiversity in a sustainable manner. Let me get straight to the point and start with my key message. The fate of the world's biodiversity depends on how we treat our forests. Now, why is that? Let me start with some facts. There are more than 60,000 different trees in the world and forest provides habitats for 80% of all known amphibian species, 75% of all bird species and 68% of all mammal species. About 60% of all vascular plants are found in tropical forests alone. And along tropical coasts, mangroves provide breeding grounds and nurseries for numerous species of fish and shellfish and help trap sediments that might otherwise smother coral reefs and seagrass beds. And it's not just animals and plants that depend on forests. We do too. Forest provides the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, and much of the food that we eat. Around 1 billion people depend to some extent on wild foods from forests, including meat, fish, fruits, and mushrooms. 75% of the world's leading food crops benefit from pollination by animals, many of which live in forests. And some 2.4 billion people depend on wood to cook their daily meals. Unfortunately, deforestation and forest degradation continue to take place at alarming rates. Agricultural expansion account for an estimated 73% of all deforestation in the tropics and subtropics. This must and can change. We need to protect, manage and restore our forests. The biggest transformational change is needed in the way in which we produce and consume food. We must transform our food systems and make them more sustainable. FAO is determined to lead the way. Secondly, to ensure positive outcomes for both biodiversity and people, we must strike a balance between conservation goals and demands for resources that support livelihoods. Fortunately, we have many examples of how conservation and sustainable use can be combined. And thirdly, we must repair and reverse the damage done through large-scale forest restoration. A few words about how FAO can help. As an intergovernmental organization, we provide evidence to underpin decisions, lead on all aspects related to the agricultural sectors, and we provide advice and technical support to individual countries upon their request. Let's start with the evidence. This year we will publish the results of the Global Forest Resources Assessment 2020, 
which contains information on the status and trends over the past 30 years of more than 60 variables related to the condition, management and uses of forests. The State of the World's Forest 2020, which will also be released this year, focuses specifically on forests, biodiversity and people, and contain a number of special studies commissioned for this purpose. This report has been prepared in collaboration with the United Nations Environment Programme and its World Conservation Monitoring Centre. A third report to be published this year looks more closely at forest-dependent pollinators and is prepared in collaboration with biodiversity. In terms of FAO's global leadership, let me briefly touch upon three examples. FAO and UNEP, the United Nations Environment Programme, have been asked to lead a UN system-wide effort to turn the tide on deforestation, involving all other relevant UN agencies and programmes. In response to this, FAO is developing a cross-sectorial initiative to spearhead the transition of our food systems to more sustainable pathways. In March last year, the UN General Assembly proclaimed 2021 to 2030 as the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. FAO and UNEP were asked to co-lead this and a draft strategy has been developed and is available for comments at the website listed here. FAO is a strong believer in partnerships. We chair the Collaborative Partnership on Forest, provide the Secretariats for the Collaborative Partnership on Sustainable Wildlife Management and for the Mountain Partnership, and we host the Forest and Farm Facility, just to mention a couple of these. And lastly, we provide specific support to our 194 member states upon requests. Some of our largest programmes include the UN RED programme, a partnership with UNDP and UNEP, helping more than 60 countries reduce their rates of deforestation and forest degradation. And the FAO EU Forest Law Enforcement Governance and Trade programme, which supports nearly 40 countries improve forest governance and fight illegal logging and trade. Our Sustainable Wildlife Management Programme demonstrates how to combine conservation and sustainable use of wildlife in 12 countries, and we will show you a short video for that programme in a little while. And we have two large programmes which help countries restore forest ecosystems. Let me end this with another key message. We all need to help protect manage and restore the world's forest and their biodiversity because they are too precious to lose. Thank you. Good morning and thank you for coming to this session. I'm going to talk very briefly about the historical, current and future roles that wildlife play in human nutrition. 10,000 years ago, everyone depended on hunting wildlife for food, but at that time there were only 3 to 5 million humans alive on Earth. Today there are over 7 billion people on the planet, and by 2040 the human population is expected to grow to over 9 billion, and half of that increase will occur in Sub-Saharan Africa. Over the last 10,000 years, farming, logging, ranching, cities, factories and roads have cleared and converted over half of the Earth's original forests, dramatically reducing the available habitat for forest-dependent wildlife species. So over the last 10,000 years, the human population has increased by 20,000% and habitat for forest wildlife has decreased by 50%. Clearly, forest wildlife no longer can produce enough edible meat each year to feed even a tiny percentage of the planet's burgeoning human population. Over the next two to three decades, the human population will continue to grow, we will increasingly become an urban species, and successful efforts to alleviate poverty will make all of us wealthier. As a result, demand for meat and fish is expected to explode, 
and many are concerned that nations, particularly in Africa, are not prepared. Today, livestock production across Sub-Saharan Africa is not keeping pace with demand for animal source foods, mostly because livestock are still seen as bank accounts and insurance, not as a primary source of food. To fill the current gap in supply, many people, out of necessity as they have no other option, are hunting the forests and fishing the rivers and lakes to secure a source of food and income. As demand for animal source foods continues to increase, Hunting wildlife for food, which is already at unsustainable levels in many places around the world, risks becoming unsustainable everywhere. The FAO Sustainable Wildlife Management Program was established to find out how to prevent this from happening. My friends Kebe and Ubo Obi, who live in the Aturi Forest of Northeastern DR Congo, like millions of indigenous peoples, they still depend on wildlife as a vital source of food income and cultural identity. If hunting of wildlife for food is not maintained at sustainable levels, wildlife populations will collapse and Ubo Bi and her family will lose an essential component of their diet and well-being and Kebe, as a traditional hunter, will lose his cultural sense of self. If it were just indigenous people who were eating wild-caught animals, hunting and fishing in the Amazon and in the Congo Basin might be sustainable. But families in rapidly growing provincial towns located near sources of wildlife are still dependent on wild animals as a source of food because there's not enough sustainable livestock production nearby to meet demand. Towns that had 6,000 people in 1990 have 160,000 people today. No forest wildlife population can feed that many people. People in big cities also still eat wildlife, yet here is no longer a dietary necessity. Rather, it's an exceedingly rare treat, something to remember grandma's cooking in the village, a cultural connection to the past. Unfortunately, even though a family may only eat a wild animal once a year, the aggregate demand from tens of millions of people living in big metropolitan areas has already emptied forests of wildlife for hundreds of kilometers surrounding cities like Kinshasa, Brazzaville, Lagos and Accra. The Sustainable Wildlife Management Program, led by FAO and funded by the European Commission, is a seven-year, 46 million euro effort to identify and replicate successful models for the conservation and sustainable use of wildlife, whilst at the same time securing the rights, well-being and cultural identity of indigenous peoples and traditional communities that are most dependent on hunting and fishing wild animals for food and for income. To prevent growing demand for animal source foods from totally depleting already overhunted and overfished wildlife populations and threatening the well-being and cultural identity of millions of indigenous peoples, we must devolve authority to manage wildlife and other forest resources to local rights holders. And we must help local communities using a human rights approach, ensuring free, prior and informed consent to put in place the governance structures they need to decide how to use their forest resources sustainably and to ensure that outsiders are prevented from hunting and fishing their wildlife without permission. As my friend Kebe once said to me, when our government begins to understand that poaching is stealing, they might push the police to help us to protect our rights. Scaling up production of domestic livestock and fish in growing provincial towns is essential if we want to conserve wildlife, protect the rights of indigenous people and feed hungry urban families. Sustainable backyard production of poultry, fish and edible insects will provide urban families with a reliable and sanitary source of high quality protein rich food, will provide women with new sources of income and will offer jobs to underemployed youth. And by scaling up sustainable production of livestock and fish to meet demand within the growing provincial towns, we will do much to reduce unsustainable demand for wildlife as food. To prevent demand for wildlife in huge metropolitan areas from driving the local extinction of species in an ever-expanding area around big cities, we need clever social marketing to change consumer behaviour. In Congo, we are seeing some early successes encouraging urban families only to eat wildlife when they visit their relatives in the village, 
reducing aggregate consumption of wildlife. So to ensure that wildlife continues to play a vital role in the cultural and material well-being of indigenous peoples, we need to secure indigenous peoples' rights, feed families in towns with sustainably produced animal source foods, and change the consumption choices of big city residents. Thank you. Le boys are coming within the rule. Sulipura. Zara, I'm going to be sitting. Zara, man, they're going to be Zanda yarunya tiale, mbohi yala kujenga fumba pia zanga. Sote zambo uishi mimi reske kuterme ni yakuhi, efu ya pet kira. Iska misi jenga le panga mpiana, meti iiri ni dhabti talo, metu uishi kajeri, uchar, uu tenga le.